Hi, this is Nancy, and this is a quick introduction to the SpiderGram process that we're going to use in our live class this week. This week we're going to use class time to do teamwork because when I join you on the call, we're going to actually look at your SpiderGrams, do some comparisons, and start thinking about the issues around technology in our, in our work. So first thing is, uh, it, it's, it's fundamental that technology, together with changing social environments, has changed, fundamentally changed how we can be together. And you've heard me say this more than once already. So this week, we're going to look at the technology perspective. Because in the first three weeks, we've been mainly looking at the purpose elements. Next week, we're going to talk about the social architecture. So this week, we're focusing on the technology. And I want to start off by introducing a term to you called technology steward or technology stewardship. Uh, this term came about when Etienne Wenger, John Smith, and I were writing the book Digital Habitats. And we were initially looking at what are the practices and tools that communities of practice use uh, when they're not all in the same place. And communities of practice are a group of people who care about something and learn about it and continue to apply their learning and, and uh, applying their learning together over time. What we actually discovered as we started researching this is this idea of technology stewardship actually applied to lots of different kinds of groups that use online technology, be they communities, networks, teams, whatever. So the technology stewards are people with enough experience of the workings of a community to understand its technology needs. In other words, they can look at a piece of software and say, oh yeah, we can handle this, our bandwidth, our skills, our priorities and enough experiment, uh, experience with the technology to take leadership in addressing those needs. Now, notice that this, this enough experience of the workings of community to understand its needs and enough experience with technology to act upon them. So this is not necessarily the IT department. It's somebody who can straddle between both those worlds, and that's a particularly important point as we have this conversation this week. And then finally, it's about supporting the technology in use. So look how some of us have been playing with Google Hangout last week and experimenting and showing tools to each other. And this unfolds to be a super important element here. This is not about giving someone the manual, you know, RFTM or whatever that expression is. This is about engagement around it so that you can get something productive done together. So in this work um, with Digital Habitats, we looked at communities to understand what they needed to, to support. So in other words, we looked at the different kinds of activities that they regularly did, and then we could map them theoretically to technologies. And what we discovered were nine basic sets of activities. Now, I'm going to tell you these, these are in the context of communities of practice. And as you look at these labels around the outside, we're actually going to shift some of those. And you may shift them again off of my suggestion. But this is to give you some context of the experiment. So there were meetings. You know, There's an agenda. They have a beginning, a middle, and end versus the open-ended conversation on the left here, which is you know, like question and answer over time. An email list would be an, you know, how we have that kind of conversation. Sort of the ongoing thread in our Facebook group would be a good example of that. On the right, we have projects. So your teams, there's interdependent tasks. We have clearly something we want to accomplish within a particular time range. Often from the projects, going back to the left, we share content. Oh, did you see this article? So um, I've been posting a lot of links from via my Tumblr blog to the faculty blog about resources that might be useful. So that will be an example of it in our particular context. Oh, we're back again on the right. I, I decided I didn't want to go in sequence, so I'm jumping around. Is ac access to expertise. So when I interview my colleagues and friends to share with you each week, that would be an example of access to expertise. These bottom four now are fairly particular to communities of practice, and they do have relationship to certain types of communities that you may be looking at in your teamwork. Um, but this is the area that may change the most. When a community has a strong orientation towards relationships, they need a way to get to know each other. Um, so, you know, uh, social time together. Again, your face. Some of the Facebook interactions may portray this. Um, member directory, so you can see who's who. Pictures become important stuff like that. Context below is: Does the community is it very inward oriented? Is it really only talk to itself? Or is it service oriented out to the world? So it wants to share what it learns out to the world. So, um, you know, external context would be, you know, out this direction, and internal would be more towards the middle. Um, community cultivation would be how much you want this group of people to move forward together, 
versus individual uh, participation where you want to give people lots of freedom and flexibility. Forgive me if a sneeze comes into this, but I have a cold. Okay. So when we looked at these things, we realized that there were different ways to figure out what's important. So if you look on the upper right, in some communities that open-ended conversation is most important. And if you identify the areas that are most important, then you can start assessing if the technology you're either selecting or evaluating, in this case you'll be evaluating, meets those needs. Now, rarely do any communities, can they, can they do all these things with utmost importance. So this also gives a way to think about prioritization. And again, if you need to go back, this gives you some ideas, some text about what these mean, meant in the communities of practice thing. And then you can start mapping it towards particular technologies. But I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I want to explain the activity we're going to do together this week in class. And you're going to do your spidergram on the whiteboard on the wall there. And then you are going to show it to me. So hopefully we'll get Google Hangout working for at least one thing or we could take the computer around. We're going to have to figure this out. But here's how it goes. This is the old spidergram and the one that you see on the handout that you were given this week. Um, and what you do, like the process is the same. If something's very important, it goes far out towards the five. If it's of no importance, it goes in the middle, and then you'll kind of connect. Um, if you're not familiar with spidergrams, this is actually a very old form of visual communication. It allows you to see where there's um, difference, um, and you can then repeat this over time. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So what I'm suggesting is there's some different kinds of things. So when we think about that initial group who's going out the ideation, you want to get individual feedback. You want to um, access expertise. So some of those things might be the most important things initially for you. When you get to the actual design work, you've got teamwork and projects. And it might require some open-ended conversation. When you go to marketing, that may be a completely different set of tools and technologies. Again, it might be related to sharing and creating content. It might be related to open-ended conversation. It might be involved building relationships. And then finally, customer support would involve you know, some specific technologies for customer support, like a Q&A. But it might involve any of these other things. So it's going to be up to you to think about the segment you're looking at and the examples you're looking at, and first identifying what are the most important activities and rank them higher. Now, if you want to do a different set of labels, you can pick your labels. I don't really care if you use my language or not. That's not what's important. What's important is here is assessing the potential activities and identifying which are most important, and then assessing if the technology is serving that. So once you get these mapped, we'll start talking about how you can evaluate the technology. Just a few more comments. Um, as you do this thing, focus on activities which best support your community or network purpose, OK? Remember, people do not have time and attention to do everything. So really, think about prioritization, OK? So you can assess where your teams are in terms of the technology stewardship here, but later on, you could also marry in the facilitation activities as well. And you can use this as a planning tool for your own work, and you could also give it as part of your recommendation to your clients saying, we did this spidergram assessment. Here are the activities we found were really important. Here are the technologies that are out there that people are using very well in these exemplar communities. Here's some areas that maybe aren't working so well. And then you could also say to the client is you could use the spidergram as an assessment tool afterwards. So you may not decide to use the spidergram in your final report. But what it does, it helps you build an assessment, planning, and reflection tool. And the way you can talk about it builds a narrative. And I'm going to leave that as a really important thing here. When you are doing your reports at the end, you are giving a story to your client. When you're trying to do ideation, for example, here are the steps, here are the opportunities, and here's the outcome. And they link together in a narrative because people can understand a narrative. It helps them hold the little bits of information together. So I hope you enjoy doing this activity. I look forward to seeing what you're going to do. We'll look at some other things together to compare between different things if you want. This is an example of looking at a comparison. So lots of things we can play with. Um, you might want to ask questions about this on the blog before we get too far into Wednesday, because that might help you in preparation. A um, couple of lessons that we've learned in the past. There's rarely just one tool that does everything for a community or a network. 
Um, togetherness in a tool does not imply only full group interactions, and sometimes there's small things happening around the side, outside of the platform, that are just as important, and I can tell you a Wikipedia story about that, if you like, on Wednesday. People start where they're comfortable and then move to where their needs are met, but sometimes they're reluctant to. So this idea and technology stewardship of helping people get there is going to come into play. And also, change in technology may change the interaction. And one thing we know is technology is always changing. So there you have it. That's it for now. I'll talk to you on Wednesday.